While you're in Las Cruces and Mesilla, you have lots of choices when it comes to dining out. From new restaurants that offer ethnic meals to our wide variety of restaurants offering Mexican food, we can't possibly show you all the options, but we've narrowed the scope a bit. I'm Cheryl Falstead. And I'm Bud Russo. And we'll be your guides to exploring three restaurants in historic buildings and with lots of history in and near Mesilla. Let's start at a restaurant housed in an adobe built in 1848. It has a bar that brings newscaster and New Mexico native Sam Donaldson here to recall his high school exploits. The Double Eagle Restaurant on the Mesilla Plaza is owned by Buddy Ritter, and his office is located where his great-grandfather's medical office once was. It is filled with beautiful antiques, museum-quality paintings, loads of ambiance, ghosts, and a Prohibition-era bar. From a speakeasy in Chicago, the bar is now topped with hardwood flooring that once covered the basketball court in the high school in Deming, where Donaldson played as a teen. Oh, did we say ghosts? The Double Eagle is rumored to be haunted by the playful ghosts of young lovers Inez and Armando, who died here years ago. Buddy Ritter purchased the building in the 1980s and began turning it into a fine restaurant filled with period furnishings. Everything in it looks old, they tell us, because it is. Every room features antiques and paintings. When you visit, ask one of the staff to show you around to learn more about the beautiful items that fill the restaurant. The Maximilian Room, named for the Emperor of France, who wanted to make Mexico his own, is quite easily the most exquisitely decorated room. Look up to see the gold leaf covered ceiling and the beautiful Baccarat crystal chandeliers. Be sure to come for Sunday Champagne Brunch when the adjoining Isabella Ballroom is used to its full advantage with tables groaning under the weight of delicious meats, salads, fruit, cheese, desserts, and more. There's something for every taste. If you love green chili cheeseburgers and you've got a big appetite, Try the world's largest here at the Double Eagle. You'd better be hungry because the patty is one and a quarter pounds. The restaurant is also known for their steaks, aged on site for seven days in a special refrigerator. The bar serves award-winning margaritas, and the wine list has been recognized for its quality by Wine Spectator magazine. The Double Eagle is open daily from 11 a.m. until 10 p.m., Monday through Saturday, and until 9 on Sundays. The Sunday brunch is served at 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m., with champagne served beginning at noon. La Posta, the second restaurant on our list, is just a bit south of the Double Eagle on the Mesilla Plaza. The restaurant was cobbled together from a number of buildings. The main portion was once the Corn Exchange Hotel. It was like an early mini-mall for travelers getting off the Butterfield stage line, offering services that they might need. Buildings that now make up La Posta were once a winery, tannery, blacksmith shop, school, and a stable. Perusing the old Corn Exchange Hotel guest book reveals names such as Albert Fountain, New Mexico Governor Catron, Cattleman John Chisholm, and one signature that says U.S. Grant, possibly General and then President Grant. La Posta's recent history as a restaurant begins with Katie Griggs. In 1939, she wanted to have a taco restaurant. So her uncle sold her this property for a dollar. She had four tables on a dirt floor, no running water, and her mom did the cooking. She started a tradition of serving tostadas and chili, today's chips and salsa. It became a very popular restaurant for locals, with Katie always out front greeting customers and making them feel welcome. When you enter La Posta today, you pass two very different shops, the La Posta Chili Shop and Mateo Jewelry. Then enter the lobby filled with beautiful exotic birds, which used to fly free. But when some of Katie's pets disappeared, perhaps the targets of student pranks, aviaries were installed. Every room in La Posta has its own story to tell and its own decor. The banquet room, once known as the grape room, was the original 1939 cafe. The lava room, with walls lined with volcanic rock, was once the stable and is today's most requested room for dining. You can eat in a room that was once a bunkhouse for stagecoach hands, or an intimate room that was once a leather shop. If you look up at the ceiling, you'll see original old vigas and latillas. Vigas are the large pieces that make up the ceiling's support, and the latillas are the smaller pieces that fill in the ceiling. Very New Mexico. 
La Posta is known for Mexican cuisine and unique bar drinks, such as their very own Bloody Maria, made of house gold tequila, their own salsa, a celery stick, and a serrano chili. They warn us that this Bloody Maria is not for wimps. Well, Cheryl, that leaves you out. Maybe if margarita would be better. La Posta is one of those places where everyone brings their friends from out of town. In fact, it's the favorite of our friend, Batan survivor Ben Scarden. A meal at La Posta is one of the highlights of his visit when he comes for the annual Batan Memorial Death March. While Colonel Scarden loves the tamales, another popular item on the La Posta menu is a tostada compuesta. On the menu since 1939, the dish consists of toasted corn tortilla cups filled with frijoles and red chili con carne, topped with chopped lettuce, diced tomatoes, and grated cheddar cheese. You know, there are some people who dine at another place called La Posta, but it's under the sea. The USS New Mexico is a submarine commissioned in 2010, and the galley is called La Posta, after this very restaurant. That was quite an honor for the restaurant and owner, Tom Hutchinson, a Navy man himself. La Posta is open 11 a.m. until 9 daily, except Friday and Saturday when they close at 9.30. It is located on the south end of the historic Mesilla Plaza. As they say, it is still everyone's favorite stop on the old Butterfield stage line. Head south of Mesilla on Highway 28 through Pecan Orchards and you'll pass through La Mesa. You'll want to stop and have a drink or a meal at Chope's, another well-known New Mexico restaurant. Chope's is casual dining for sure. When my parents visited a few years ago and we wanted to try Chope's for the first time, I called to get their hours and inquired about a dress code. The man who answered laughed and said, It's Chope's, girl. Wear what you want. Jeans it was. Chope's has two buildings, a bar and a restaurant. But whether you decide to hang out in the bar or head to the restaurant, you can get a cold, refreshing beverage either way. Chope's was once a home, and in 1915, Longina Benavida sold enchiladas to her neighbors. They knew a hot batch was ready when she hung a lantern outside the front door. Her son Jose, nicknamed Chope, inherited the 1850s home from his mother, and it became the family business. Chope was the Democratic precinct captain for La Mesa, and many political candidates spent time at Chope's working to earn his endorsement. Chope died in 1990, but his family still runs the restaurant, and his widow, Lupe, make sure that her recipes are carefully followed. Popular menu items at Chope's include chili rellenos, the fiery hot salsa, and the enchiladas. One reviewer on Yelp enthuses, there are restaurants and then there are shrines that serve food. Chope's is a shrine, nay, a church, a church of food, a church where chili rellenos are the gospel, beer the holy water, menus the liturgy, and sopapillas the host. Amen. Chope's is located south of Mesilla on Highway 28 in La Mesa. They are open Tuesday through Saturday for lunch from 11.30 to 1.30, then for dinner from 5.30 to 8.30 Tuesday through Thursday. On Friday and Saturday, they open for dinner at 4.30. As we said at the beginning, there are many wonderful restaurants in the Mesilla Valley for you to try. These three are among those that have stood the test of time and have lots of great stories to tell. This podcast is sponsored by the Las Cruces Convention and Visitors Bureau and produced by Explore New Mexico.